Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and thank you to my moderator, Crackling Ice, for suggesting this video. Let's see if you guys can see it here. The Master Liquid Light 120 by Cooler Master. Now, this isn't an unboxing, it's going to be a review and performance results all in one. But, let's get a little bit close to the camera here. And let's actually look at what we got here. So I already took it out. I've already done my testing, so I actually have your answers. Um, but I did it for AM4. So if you guys look, it has little you know, tabs on each end. So it uses the stock mounting, which, interestingly enough, the stock holders don't use the stock mounting. I, I find that interesting. Um, when it comes to installation, <laughs> Color Master, you need to step your game up. I mean, I don't know if I can show you guys this or not, but like, there's so much gap here to mount these brackets like you can you can see it right here so and i tried so many times they don't line up that well the mounting was a pain this Kohler size doesn't fit in a spec 04 all the way which kind of pain the butt um so it's 40 bucks and it's an aio 120 so i can cut a little bit of slack but boy like you could have spent a little bit more time i'm going to get different screws for this because these like don't even fit right they are the right screws but it does support AM4. I'll be honest, the mounting went like that. <laughs> it wasn't even straight up and down, but you know what? I knew it worked based off of my results, so I'm not going to complain. You have LGA 2011, you have LGA 1156, 1155, 1151. I mean, you have, I mean, they give you a lot of stuff. So, you know, and no, these are not the screws that are supposed to go in there, so I checked those too. Um, but I really can't complain. 40 bucks shipped to my door. We have a 120 millimeter AIO. So in this test, we're comparing four Kohlers, okay? We're not comparing the Hyper 212. I have one, I don't have the mounting for it, but I have one. The Hyper 212, let me show you here, honestly does not perform any better than this guy for my testing. We're talking one or two degrees at most. So. I mean, literally, this is the Race Spire. I think this is the LED one because I tested the LED that came with the 1700. I, I mean, it's fine. It works great. I wouldn't waste money on Hyper 212. I would either get something that came with one of these or spend more money on something more than Hyper 212. I also compared an H100i. That's in my system. And let me show you guys here really quick. This was a really bad comparison. But I also... Totally wasn't ready for this. Compared the Wraith Stealth that comes with the R3. So, yes. Why? The answer is because I could. So, why not? That's what we do here at PC Budge Solutions. We do something different. We don't do what everybody else does and we push the limits. So, let's find out is it worth spending a hundred or hundred for? $40, $45 ship with taxes in some cases for a 120 AIO. Well, I'll tell you this, the amount of headaches I had to install that took me nearly 40 minutes to figure everything out and get everything aligned properly, I could build a computer in 40 minutes. Is it worth the headache? Well, I have that answer, you don't, but you guys are about to find out with me. So let's take a super quick look at the system we're working on today. We have the Ryzen 5 1600 paired with the Asus B350 MA board, Corsair LPX memory per usual 2133, the Seasonic N122 power supply, a GTX 1060 6 gig DDR, GDDR5 by gigabyte. That's an open air design, very important for this uh, testing. A Corsair Spec 02 that has a total of two fans, uh, one intake, one exhaust, a Mushkin 250 gig SSD, and a two terabyte Seagate drive. That's the system. Let's take a look at how well these coolers performed. So here we have the Ryzen 5 1600 at 3.6 GHz, 1.35 volts. The big thing is, is 1.35 volts. I wasn't trying to mess with failed overclocking. And the Race Stealth pretty much hit what I would consider thermal throttling. I really wouldn't recommend running a CPU at 92 degrees Celsius for any period of time other than a couple minutes for testing. The Race Spire LED did okay. 85 degrees is a little bit warm for my liking. This is a synthetic load, so not horrible. That should put you in the mid to low 70s as gaming. But as a content creator, you're going to be in the 80s quite often. That will shorten the lifespan of the CPU a little bit. How many years, I don't know, but it may not make a huge difference. But enter the Master Liquid 
light 120. 70 degrees Celsius, that is really good for a $40 Kohler, considering that the Hyper 212 would perform much similar to the RAF Spire. And then obviously we come with the Corsair H100i V2, running 56 degrees Celsius. That is very, very, very chill. Very happy with these results, but let's say you wanna push your Kohler just a little bit further. Let's take a look at 1.4 volts. Now let's talk about from the top down. 101 degrees Celsius, um, I'll be honest, the 92 degrees, basically anything north of 90, I stopped the test. So I didn't run everything for a full 15 minutes, half hour, whatever have you. If it was running north of 90, I'm not trying to damage anything. So I would wait for it to spike, calm down, spike again, see where it's at, and basically just cut it. At the 101, as soon as I saw 101, I, I cut it. So obviously the CPU cooler comes with the Ryzen 3. It's not going to be able to do 1.4 volts, but... Honestly, it doesn't even do 1.35 volts. So the whole overclocking your Ryzen 3 of the stock cooler to 3.8 or 3.9 gigahertz, not happening. You're going to need to buy something else. But this is why we're testing this. Even the Race Spire LED, which is the one that comes with the Ryzen 7 1700, didn't fare well either. 92 degrees Celsius is, the, again, like even gaming, that's, that's going to be too much. But the Master Liquid Light 120, I am impressed 77 degrees Celsius, okay? Synthetic load. So we're talking, this one was run for about 45 minutes. This particular, this actually ran a little bit longer than I intended to. 77 degrees Celsius, that's fantastic for a $40 Kohler. You're really not gonna push the chip much, much past 1.4 volts. Now, the Corsair H100i coming at 62 degrees Celsius. I mean, obviously, dual 120 radiator, going to do a good job. I'm very happy. I actually ran this at 1.42 volts and it's staying around 64 degrees. So 1.25 rather. So very impressed with that. But I think I think this was worth it. Thank you, uh, Crackling Ice, for mentioning this because I think this is a product that a lot of you, my viewers, might purchase. So let's go ahead and wrap this up. So the first question I have for this guy is, is the headache worth it? I'm going to say yeah, because in many cases, people can afford about a $40 aftermarket cooler in their budget. And to be truthful, the Hyper 212, while it does a good job on Ryzen, the Race Fire coolers are almost as good as the Hyper 212 for my testing earlier. For roughly $10 more, you can get this, which is going to perform better. So getting by maybe some case compatibility in the rear and some really janky mounting in the front, I think our test results showed that, you know, it was definitely worth it. You can get 1.4 volts, maybe quite not high comfortably, upper 70s. I mean, that's synthetic, so that's not gaming. So I was pretty impressed. Now, keep in mind, though, I have this, the GP running max now, GTX 1060, open air design, but the room is roughly like 20, 21 degrees Celsius, so it's not even 70 degrees in here. So that is something to consider. I do keep the temperature colder. But when you take away the fact you're not doing synthetics and then you're gaming, that should probably balance itself out depending on how warm your room is. But if you're a veteran PC builder and you can get around this janky mounting, go for it. It definitely has my backing. I think for entry level overclocking, you know, if you want something a really high end, like I'm running 1.425 volts on my system, get an H100i. But I think up until then, you're good with this. So, if you want to buy this or this computer, since it's technically featured there, link's in the description below. Like the video if you liked it. If you don't like it, I'm cool with that. You know, I won't do this budget stuff. I mean, you guys seem to like it, though. And uh, leave a comment in the description below. Uh, let's talk. See what you guys think about this stuff. But, as always, this is Steve from PC Budget Solutions. And I'll see you guys later on down the road. And I got a new haircut. Like if you like the haircut.